Good afternoon, everyone, and thank you for coming to Dale Chanel's 40th World, where we do the bold and the beautiful recaps and reviews. Today, we're going to be discussing the bold and the beautiful that aired for Tuesday, January 3rd, 2017. Second review for the new year. Ha <laughs> ha! For the bold and the beautiful, of course. We're going to get right on into those scene, the scene that happened today. We got Wyatt and Quinn talking to each other at Forrester Creations about uh, Eric. And everything that he's gone through and how wonderful he's been with uh, him being positive uh, about him and Steffi's marriage, this, that, and the third, blah, 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 blah. <laughs> I'm like, come on, Spencer, man. You're talking to Mama Bear, the devil mama right there, okay? She can go be like the wind one day, be like an earthquake the next. You just can never tell about what your mother is going to do to upset your life. And once again, you're being very, very naive, thinking that she's truly, truly changed and that whatever she does won't affect your life. I mean, come on, Spencer man, you're losing it. But anyway, they're going to make really some mad talk amongst each other. And he goes on to tell, uh, well, Qu uh, Mama Bear goes on to tell Spencer Man that, hey, you got a lifeline. You got a lifeline once again. You better not blow it. You better take advantage of it and get your wife back. Okay? Yes, you better do such things as that because how is going your mama finna sabotage some stuff and she's finna get sabotaged on as well. But anyway, Spencer Man is telling his mom, devil mama. She really, or he says, you really have a stand-up guy when it comes to uh, the master tier, or master puppeteer, <laughs> I meant to call him, because he's still a master manipulator himself, and he's pulling them strings when it comes to his granddaughter, million dollar baby, okay? The master puppeteer is still in full effect, all right? So, he's pretty much telling his mother, that, hey, you got a stand-up guy. He's really cool. He's been there for both of us financially, um, emotionally. And please just don't blow it. Please don't blow it. But little do he know <laughs> in her small little rim of her head, her mind, her body, she's thinking about Rusty Dusty of all people. Of all people, I would have gave it Deacon Sharp. But you're going to fall for your arch nemesis? Are you kidding me? Oh, my God. Talk about a Batman Catwoman situation. Anyway, he still tells his mom, don't screw it up, mom. Anyway, we move on to mil Million Dollar Puppet. She's still trying to explain to Bozo the Clown why she had to move out and move back to Thomas's digs. For the life of me, I don't understand for... Um, used to be known as Black Widow, now known as Million Dollar Puppet, why can't she have her own place? What is wrong with the writers? Why can't this single woman, who's really technically married, but she's leaving, living a single life in fidelity hood, in fidelity, okay? However it is what it is, but I mean, everybody else has their own pad to crash at, but no, not million dollar baby. And with that million dollar a year annual salary she's getting, I'm pretty sure she can find her own digs and not have to go back and forth between Thomas's and Ridge's loft or temporarily setting up shop there or even thinking about going setting up shop back where she came from, which was her marriage beach house to a special man, even if he still stayed there at Eric's estate. Why she had full access of the beach house. Why don't she have her own digs, people? I'm not understanding that. But we're moving on from there. We have uh, Mama Bear is looking at Rusty Dust's drawings and the inclusion of her jewelry on his sketch pad of the particular gown he's designing. And I'm sitting there like, no, you ain't. No, you cannot be torn really mentally, emotionally between Papa Bear and Rusty Dusty. Are you kidding me? But she's playing all of this in her head and it's driving her crazy with um, desire and eroticness. When guess who walks in the door, y'all? Ridge. <laughs> 
all rusty dusty and he could see she was in deep thought dot and he could see she was holding that gown that little uh on his sketch pad she was holding that gown real tight thinking of the man who designed it and who thought enough of her to put the jury besides one of his masterpieces of a creation. So, yeah, she's on the hook. You don't got a hook. The worm is on the hook, ready to throw out and catch the big fish, which will be Master Puppeteer. Okay? And just like you said throughout the episode toward the end, he already done stole one woman from his dad, which was, you remember, uh, they had a little tiff way back in the day where he was liking on um logan's run or he was you know liking brooke at the time meaning papa bell and somehow you know through the chaos of all these different relationships going on and Steffi getting upset and you know all just a whole bunch of mess they end up getting married but then rusty dusty came around some shortly time afterward and stole her back from his dad so they've always had this really crazy relationship but again like i said they're not biologically uh, family or blood lines tied. So I can see the mix up, but it's just too much. <laughs> it's too much because that's where he's going right back down in line. He's going to steal another woman from his dad. And then was like, are you sure you want to do that? So I just gave y'all a little tidbit because I just had to bring it in there. Um, or what's going to go on at the latter part of this episode. So then, like I said, uh, Rusty Dusty walks in and see, uh, excuse me, crazy um, Quinn look, look down mesmerized at one of his drawings. We leave that situation. We come back. We go back to Million Dollar Puppeteer. She's calling Carter. Now, I remember Carter. The man is going to turn, going to be working at Walmart or any other type of retail or fast food joint because he was trying to give up his license when he was trying to make. Quinn not know she had power of attorney over Papa Bill. I know y'all remember that situation. So why is he still on retainer <laughs> for the Foster Creations family? I'm not sure. I mean, I can see why he's on retainer with Eric Foster, but I don't see why he would have kept, you know, like, I'm going to still do what you need me to do instead of just referring her to another lawyer and not putting him in the midst. Because, I mean, really, why would he have to? Uh, he, I mean, he's a real estate lawyer, I'm sure, some kind of financial lawyer so why is he into trying to help marriage um or maybe it's just the whole equity of what a person can get from them since they're in the rich and famous um type of traffic lane that they travel in so maybe it's a little bit higher than what i'm trying to give it um the course for so basically we just go with that and just you know we're gonna downplay it but anyway she calls carter trying to see if she could speed her divorce up quickly because she don't want to be falling in no trap and she knows she's still feeling something for wyatt but she don't want to spend too much time with wyatt and complicate things so that's why she's hollering at carter carter to see find a loophole is what she's asking him so we can get this divorce quick and over we don't need to wait six months he knows i don't want to be with him and he's not really trying to stop me so find it so evidently she must have asked nicole to come over to pick up some papers or maybe nicole needed to drop by meaning you know my take charge and talk nicole you know her she's come by to see stephan which is of course the master puppeteer's granddaughter okay <laughs> million dollar baby all right so we leave that situation we go to bozo the clown he's overseeing Spencer man at Forrester Creations about him not getting a um, million dollar puppet. I'm like, y'all just go back and forth with million dollar puppet. She don't give a shit about neither one of y'all. It's all about them coins. I keep trying to tell y'all. Y'all just happen to be in the loop of being from uh, wealthy families. But she's trying to get her own coin on her own family's dollar in time. So we got two men here, two crazy men. Fighting over one woman who's nothing but AKA Black Widow. She don't care. She will suck you dry and then throw you in the sea. Okay? But we're moving on. We go back to Rusty Dusty. Rusty Dusty is flirting with um, Mama Bear on the low low. And she's talking or she's taking his bait, believe it or not, self consciously. And it's going to be consciously. She's going to be don't got caught up into something she's going to be able to get out of. I'm telling you, people. Double Mama is playing a dangerous game. <laughs> She's floating back between Mama Bear, being that, you know, 
heroic type homie, uh, matriarch type of woman. Then she's going back into her devilish evil way. So she's teetering. The writer's got her teetering and tottering. We don't know which way she's going to fall because she's definitely going to fall. Okay. We go to commercial. We come back. We go to the scene where Spencer Man is telling Oh, excuse me, Bozo the Cloud, why are you coming to me about this news? And I'm kind of confused myself. I'm like, my Lord, Bozo the Cloud, you don't talk to everybody under the sun. Why don't you just fall to your knees and pray? <laughs> play, honey. Pray, pray, pray that she does the right thing and stay with you. But I know you're scared, too. You question her uh, loyalty, all the liability that's going to be had if it doesn't come out to be... Uh, where y'all are going to be together. Yes, I can understand your fear. But really, Bozo the Clown, you really going to go over there and fuss with Spencer Man when technically he has all the cars on his side? Because yes, that is still his wife that you are messing with. You're actually making her a whore. You know what I'm saying? So, mm, not a good look. Not a good look, Bozo. So then we have Bozo is telling uh, Spencer Man, your mother is behind this, and you know this, this, that, and the third. And then uh, Spencer Man just gets right on into him, telling him, hey, at least you got dad on your side. I don't have nobody on my side. And if Papa Bear wants to sit up there, Master Puppeteer want to help me, then damn sure it's going to be like that. Because I don't give a damn about you and what you want. Technically, Black Widow is my wife. Million Dollar Puppet is my wife. And you didn't respect that. And now you want me to respect you on um, leaving her alone to just, I don't know, play with you in the sand, in your sandbox. And when she gets tired, she's going to eventually get tired and she's going to come back to me anyway. So they just go back and forth, back and forth, back and forth. And then Bozo the Clown hits the last straw. And he says, you know what? It doesn't matter because you are. And your mother not going to get her because she's going to always come back to me. You want to know why? Because she's loyal. She's loyal to me. I said, well, technically, no, Bozo the Clown. Uh-uh, million dollar baby puppet ain't loyal to nobody. Haven't you learned that? You were this, just with her. Y'all made love, made sex, she had food for you. Y'all didn't eat, had a romantic night. Gave you her body and, and her soul again. And guess what? She still walked out and left you behind. So stop it. Face facts, face facts. You're messing with a poor garden tool. You know, the one that you have to dig up holes with. I'm giving you the latter part, okay? To think about what kind of person you have that you're trying to make a life with. Are you kidding me? Anyway, we go from that scene. We have um, Tay Charles Nicole is getting the paper sign. I guess maybe um, Million Dollar Puppet had asked her to bring some papers up or she needed to get them signed for some publicity or social media thing they're working on with. I, I don't know because she's a PR person. She's the PR assistant next to uh, Spencer Man. So who knows really why she was there. But she's looking at um, Million Dollar Puppet saying you got two rich men fighting over you. That is going to be a headache. So if you think you're going to be clear in mind and clear in spirit anytime soon, you are just faking the phone. It's not going to happen, baby girl. Not going to happen. So then she leaves. Then we go back to Rusty Dusty. Rusty Dusty is getting Mama Bear into the scene. He wants her to give her creative juices to why her jewelry fits so well with his gown. So he has to get her really into it. So he comes over and tells her, feel the fabric, honey. Feel the fabric. Because what you're saying is true, but I need you to feel it. So you'll understand why it just flows in sync. And it's such a fluid feeling and soft and caress. And I'm trying to get her appetite wet for whatever he's really trying to put down on. And he grabs her hand. He goes and rubs the her hand over the bust of the uh, model mannequin and he slides her hand down in between the cleavage to give her something to pant on like they were having sex or something mind sex and games is what uh rusty dusty was playing with her meaning um devil mama and she's taking the bait like i said he just need to just just throw that um Toss that little spring on out there and see and see what you bring back. And I swear it's gonna be Papa Bear, okay? Look at mean and ugly at her and at his son. Hell, he might even have a heart attack after this. It is what it is, right? Then we go back to Spencer Man. He's overseeing million dollar baby puppet. Okay. 
everybody babies to, to love at this point. She don't found herself back over at her brother Thomas's slash her father's loft. Okay. And I'm like, again, why does she have her own deeds? Why why does she just only stay in a hotel? You know, and what a rich or famous stay when they get in their houses renovated or they moving into another house and that house is not quite finished. No, it's something to that nature. I understand. I don't really understand because it just looked like a bunch of junk sitting there. And he goes on to see if he can help her with anything because he's Spencer Man. He does that. He got to be up her ass as well as uh, Bozo the Clown. So again, she has two men falling, fawning over her, and she just thinks it's hilarious. But yet, she says, I, I still am divorcing you, Spencer Man. I am going to be with the love of my life. This destiny shit all over again. And it's not you. It's Bozo the Clown. Okay, we'll go to commercial. we come back. We'll go back to Rusty Dusty. Rusty Dusty tells uh, Katie, because she, she pretty much walks in on them prior to that scene. But anyway, Katie comes over to see, um, what's her name? Well, no, I'm sorry. Go, let's go back. Katie tell, I mean, um, Rusty Dusty tells Quinn, they are working together with the apparel and jewelry line. That's, and then that's when Katie comes in. Or say, oh, hell, somewhere around now. She just barges in anyway when they're actually talking about the dress and design. He's actually had hit her hands and he, their hands were in cuffs together. Um, and he was just running her hand down the neck and, and she walks in, but it was like after the fact they were through with the hands and, and talking cause it got the queen all hot and she was just here and nor there. So, uh, I really thought that Katie had come over to see Ridge, but in fact, she came over to have a little light conversation with my uh, mama bear. Okay. Double mama. So he pretty much excuses himself out the door so the two women can talk amongst themselves. Okay, then we go back to Spencer Man and uh, Million Dollar Puppet. And they're just making small talk about the comments and goings, why she really moved, what Eric feel about the situation, her being over there, uh, not fully divorced yet, living a lie and, and scandal and all this kind of crap. And then they start talking about uh, Papa Bear and Mama Bear. It's just a whole mess. So we ain't going to really cover that too much. We're going to go to where... Uh, Spencer Man's offering his beach house to um, Million Dollar Baby. You know, I'm just like, all oh, this stuff's just getting thrown at these women who ain't nothing but pure whores. You know what I'm saying? They they want to come in, upset boundaries, upset things uh, in a perfect family setting and, and just screw it all up. And then they still get showered. Oh, I can't understand how the world is made up and why people fall into these... Um, dangerous scenarios because that shit happens in real life and i just don't understand it you know what i'm saying how can people who love marriage find themselves getting in compromising positions and then th wanting to throw their marriage away for something that's very very futile and it's not gonna last and then you're gonna try to put the family unit back together and it's not gonna work it's not going to work okay because you're not going to be able to forget what happened. You can forgive all day long, but it doesn't erase the fact that you went through that and that you're forced to relive that every time you make eye contact at that person. So it is just a hot mess. But she really was stupid enough to think that Spencer Man was offering her the beach house alone. No, he's saying, that's my beach house. I'm going to stay there too. And she was like, oh, no, I don't want it then. I'm like, huh, did you really think it didn't come with no strings? Mm -hmm million dollar puppet did you really not you already up on a puppet string with your grandfather being the master puppeteer you haven't you, you still got more links to be linked to so other people can control you as well because you're not your own woman that's why you're in this mess that you are in now okay then we go to bozo the clown he's overseeing rusty dusty once again telling him about how he can't take it we got to do some this that and the third i said no bozo the clown all thing you got to do is fall back <laughs> <laughs> and let the cookies fall where they may because the quick cookies are definitely going to fall whether they fall on your lap or whether they fall on Spencer Man lap they're definitely going to fall okay so he's just he's just too much right now he's really really too much but he's over there talking about the whole thing with what uh, is going on currently and he wants to know what does Rusty Dust is going to do about it what, what plan or action do they have so Rusty Dust is telling Bozo the Clown, clown that um uh, Mama Bear Queen is falling for him. He knows it. 
So, okay, yeah, she has some infatuation towards you, but what are we really going to do, man? And he's still telling him, no, she is falling for me, like, kind of want to jump my bones and, and have us have a relationship. That's the kind of uh, tea I'm dropping on you today, nut. Listen to me. And, you know, Bozo the client really started listening to him. He's like, well, damn, you crazy. You willing to risk everything? I mean, I was just saying, you know, I'm in the boat of losing everything, but you're going to lose family. You're going to lose the love of your adopted dad who's really been your dad all your life. And then the love of your life, bro, you, you, you ready to lose Logan Ron? He said, let's fold up. Let's pop breaks for a minute now because you got a hell of a lot more to lose than me. I will bounce back, but I don't, I don't know. You might have to run out to uh, Timbuktu. Forget Paris. Forget Tokyo. Mm-mm. If you get Shanghai, China, you might go a little further. But anyway, um, he just sit there looking. I'm like, okay, okay. Mm, I'm shocked, but okay. Then we have uh, Super Snoop Katie and um, Devil Mama. Well, really, she's really tame mama right now because she used to be going off on uh, Super Snoop out here and there, especially when it comes to Eric. But she's telling her out front, want to be transparent, that she was over visiting Papa Bear and, you know, over, you know, over her house without her knowing anything about it. But, you know, hey, I just, she just said, I want to be up front with you. <sighs> it was your husband that called me. And I was just, you know, coming over, seeing what he wanted. And just that and third. And, you know, um, Devil Mama just get that little crazy smile of hers on her face. Said, oh, no, I know you're not there to hurt me. Just that and Yeah, because you got something else to worry about. You're worried about Rusty Dustin. So, you know, again, Katie Super Snoop is just giving her compliments about how Eric just really loves her. He just feels she's so loyal. And she goes on, you know, say, I hope you're just the same as with him, which I know you are. You know, trying to get to trip her up and stuff. I'm like, Quinn just don't know. She got so many devils around her ready to trip her up and throw her out. You know what I'm saying? She just don't know. I'm like, come on back. We need you to get a little bit more meaner because you're slipping. You're slipping, Mama Bear. You're slipping, Devil Mama. You are slipping. We go to commercial. We come back. We have... um. Million Dollar Puppet says she can't move back with him, meaning uh, Spence Man at the beach house. Um, it will totally be interfering into what they're still trying to do, which is for them to get a divorce, for her to move on with Bozo the Clown, and for their relationship to stay intact. That's pretty much what she told him. That's pretty much what she's going with right now. That's her storyline. <laughs> But, you know, push on the show. Master Puppeteer said, uh-uh, you need to stay with your husband. She'll be back there. Uh, we call it annulling the divorce proceedings. She's going to want to stay married. It's going to be like that. And that is what Bozo the Clown is so concerned about. Then we have Spencer Man is uh, trying to tell um, Million Dollar Puppet, I'm just here to help you. I'm just trying to get you to not be stressed. You know, I'm trying to help you settle in into your new digs, even if it is temporary. I just want to be there for you. Ah, but she says she can handle it. This is what um, Million Dollar Puppet is saying to her husband, basically. Still is, on paper, anyway, whether she done moved on emotionally or not. Doesn't matter. Okay, this man is pretty much begging Million Dollar uh, Puppet to just stay in the marriage, just stay with him, or just let him be around her. I'm like, oh, you really have fallen off the ship. Spencer, man, you really have fallen out the slip. Where's Bill? Because you need a tutorial of how to treat a woman and how to keep your self-respect in the same, you know, essence of who you are. Because right now you're looking, you're looking pretty pitiful. You're looking pretty pitiful, man. But anyway, we go to, um, this is the last, no, not the last part. We've got Katie, uh, Super Snoop, still over there, make a small conversation with uh, Mama Bear. Uh, Devil Mama, and really, Devil Mama's not really there, not in her mind. She knows she's there, I means Super Snoop. She knows she's having a conversation, but she's done totally blocked her out. She's totally fantasizing about Rusty Dusty and where this stuff can really go. While Super Snoop is in the background telling her about loyalty, <laughs> morality, and all this stuff, I'm like, oh, so overplayed, so overdone. Moving on, we go to Bozo the Clown. He's questioning Rusty Dusty's plan, his plan of action. Bozo is telling him, hey, Devil Mama goes down. You go down, too. Are you ready for that? Uh, 
And then those little clowns says, you're not going to sleep with her, are you? Now, you ain't crossing them kind of barriers. And at first, it seemed like he said no. But he's like, oh, I'm full speed ahead. Wherever it go, it go. But it will be some recording. So I can definitely take it back to my dad and show him what I accomplished and what I had told him all along. Giving Mama Bell a few inches to hang herself, she will do it. Okay? And he's like, you crazy. <laughs> said you are literally crazy but i like it and i think it can work i'm like bozo the clown and rusty does it hooked up that is not a good team that is not a good team okay to be a part of so basically rusty does just confirms solidly that hey if i'm going down you best believe i'm taking double mama right along with me so if i'm outcasted at least i can say I took one for the team, even though it's going to be a hard thing and I may lose a lot. But I'm the only one that really cares about this company and really would do anything to keep it afloat. And that's pretty much what he said. I'm going to take a woman away from my dad once again. I took Logan's run. So now, guess what? I am going to throw my wild charms out and I'm going to seduce his second wife <laughs> that I am going to take from him. And I'm like, oh, Lord, heart attack going to come, stroke going to come, or somebody going to have to be uh, go six feet under the scene. Like, okay, it is definitely going to be some comings and goings if this scenario plays out that the writers are trying to push for. I tell you, I enjoyed the um, Bold and the Beautiful today. I look forward to uh, looking at it again and putting out my commentary and my visuals for tomorrow's episode. But once again, this was the Bold and the Beautiful recap for Tuesday, January 3rd, 2017. Please enjoy. Please share and like my videos. And if you haven't subscribed to my channel, please do so at this time. Thank you. Blessings. Bye-bye.